Un aplauso, un aplauso para Narciso, claro que sí. Bueno, ¿qué tal? ¿Estáis tuiteando? ¿Estáis concursando los, los sorteos que hay? ¿Estáis tuiteando? ¿Tú, por ejemplo, estás tuiteando sobre el Google Home? No, ¿A que no he tuiteado? ¿Qué voz, qué voz os gustaría para vuestro Google Home? ¿Quién? Sheldon Cooper, sí, muy buena. Yo, mi voz favorita para mi Google Home sería el marciano de Mars Attack. ¿Eh? Que a lo mejor le dijeras, oh, ¿qué pasa, Google? Eh, ¿cómo, qué, ¿Qué tiempo hace? Y te dijera, ¡da, da, da, da! ¿Eh? Oye, estaría bien, ¿no? Como voz de Google Home. Bueno, ahora vamos a tener a Katie Bauer, que es científica de datos de Reddit, el foro más grande del mundo, uno de los foros más grandes del mundo, ¿eh? no como foro coches, ¿eh? porque foro... es igual pero sin trolls. Entonces, no, no se ponen todos de acuerdo para que gane Amaya, Operación Triunfo, ni nada de eso, pero, pero va a estar aquí Kiri Bauer. Y después vamos a tener a Carmen Rodríguez y Raquel Fernández de Walters People. ¿Vale? Así que ahora un aplauso enorme para Kiri Bauer. Hola, soy Kiri Bauer y soy un scientist en Reddit. And data science is a pretty weird job. About 10 years ago, no one was calling themselves a data scientist. You might have been a developer, you might have been a statistician, you maybe even called yourself a quant, but you definitely did not call yourself a data scientist. And that shows when people are writing job descriptions for data science. People will ask for tons of experience in distributed computing, They want you to be super knowledgeable about some obscure corner of conditional probability, and they want you to have been building deep neural networks since the 80s. Those people do not exist. We call them myths. We call them unicorns. And that ambiguity can be frustrating to deal with as a data scientist. But it's something that I'm actually somewhat used to, because long before I thought I was going to be a data scientist, I had a different plan for my life. I wanted to be a linguist. Being a linguist is also kind of like being a data scientist in that most people don't know what you do for a living. Don't ever ask a linguist how many languages they speak. They'll probably give you a very sarcastic answer. But ling uh, linguists study language as if it were a natural phenomenon, like an ecosystem. And they're always studying patterns and trying to recognize them, something that's kind of like machine learning. But I didn't know anything about that when I first got into linguistics. The first thing that made me even think about it uh, was taking a class called quantitative sociolinguistics. And that's a mouthful, but simply described quantitative sociolinguistics tries to build mathematical models that describe how and why people talk the way they do. So, you, for example, you might build a linear regression model to understand whether someone was going to say something formal, like hello, or something informal, like what's up. And your input variables would be something like the gender of the speaker, their age, whether they're talking to their boss or their friend. And what you do with that model is then you extract the coefficients from the formula you've developed to understand what's important. That may not be that interesting to you, but I thought it was really cool. I loved the idea that I could turn language into a mathematical representation and plug it into a computer. It was combining natural language with a programming language. And I really wanted to explore more programming. So before I finished school, I ended up taking a ton of computer science coursework, taking computational linguistics classes, and learning a lot about natural language processing. And when I finished school, I did something kind of unorthodox. I'd been telling everyone for years that linguistics was my passion, but I didn't follow it. Instead, I followed my curiosity and decided that I wanted to become a computer programmer. I moved to the San Francisco Bay Area intending to work as a developer, and it was actually sort of hard to convince people that I could do it. I had a linguistics degree, and I had no work experience as a developer, but I was enthusiastic and ambitious, and I kept applying for jobs until eventually I did get hired by a startup. But here's the kicker. I got hired as a linguist. I worked uh, for a natural language search startup that turned natural sentences that you might say to your friend into a search query and recommended things for you to do. And my job, as the linguist at the company, was to take those sentences, break them apart, and map them to a logical entity in the back end of the system. It was really fun, actually. Uh, a lot of it was pretty straightforward quality assurance, but sometimes something interesting would happen. For example, one day I found that the phrase German shepherd was showing up as food in the back end. That was really bad. <laughs> People were a little offended, so we had to fix it pretty fast. 
and it was one of my first tastes of how machine learning can go wrong. See, our system was recognizing a pattern. Whenever it saw German in a phrase, it was in something like German beer, German sausage, German chocolate cake. So when it sees this new word shepherd, it says, oh, German always goes before food items, so German shepherd must be food. And once we found that, we figured out how to fix it pretty fast. And I was so fascinated by this. I love the idea that data could help power our product in that way and that we could use it to drive a business. And that was when I realized I wanted to follow my curiosity again and take another new path in my career. I moved on to be an analyst and then later a data scientist in the advertising technology industry. Advertising might not sound very interesting, but it's actually a really cool space if you work in data. It's some of the largest data sets you'll ever get your hand on. And you actually get to solve really cool problems. One of my favorite things I got to do as a data scientist in ad tech was working on a system where an advertiser would give us a long list of products, sometimes 200,000 different products, and they would want to know what products they should group together to sell. That sounds like it might not be that big of a problem, but it's actually kind of hard, and you can only get so far with heuristics. For example, if you wanted to group together things by category and you put a bunch of bathing suits together, People would probably buy them, but you're probably only going to buy one or two bathing suits at a time. Wouldn't it be better if you could look at your product catalog and see a bathing suit and recognize a pair of sunglasses that matched, and a hat, and a beach towel, and you would have a perfect day at the beach? I built an algorithm that could do that with these long lists of products, uh, and I combined everything I knew. I was using data about the prices. I was using data about the time of year that products were typically sold. I was using computer vision to match colors and patterns of products and I was using natural language processing to take descriptions of products and figure out which ones were similar. People loved what we came up with. It planned their outfit for them, and it made their day. But a couple years ago, I uh, decided I would take yet another new path in my career. I was approached by a recruiter at Reddit. Reddit was in a weird situation. It was a nearly 12-year-old company at the time uh, that I started working there, and in that time, there had been very little work done on their data. And they wanted me to join their data science team as one of its founding members. And I couldn't help myself. I was really curious. I followed my curiosity again, and I became a data scientist at Reddit. And Reddit has been very different from my career so far. There's a lot of work that hasn't been done. The data is, uh, we, while I've been there, we have moved it from uh, an obsolete data warehouse into the Google Cloud Platform service. Uh, we've done a lot of transformation to get it usable for analytics, empowering business decisions, and empowering people to understand how people use the platform today and how they want to use it in the future. And I've gotten to do some pretty cool, sophisticated things, too. I've done work to help understand the performance of recommender systems to help people find new content on the site and understand where is their favorite part on the site before they even know. Uh, I've done some kind of silly things, like I've studied whether people spend more time looking at dog pictures or cat pictures, as much as it pains me to say it is cats. I'm a dog person. Uh, but one of the coolest things to me is that now I am building mathematical models to understand how and why people talk on Reddit. I'm doing natural language processing, and all these years later, uh, I've come full circle. Now I'm doing linguistics again, and I love it. <laughs> And it's crazy that I got there by following my curiosity. Thank you.